Yes. Hello. Hello, so we're going to a Bernie kickoff, ra or not rally, what is it, meeting, I guess? Organizing event. Organizing, Organizing event. What do you think this event is going to be like? Yeah, I'm interested because I actually have not gone to an organizing event for Bernie and Johnny has um, when he ran in 2016. I think it's going to be based on what Johnny has told me. We're going to watch um, a video of Bernie talking to everyone across the nation who's at this event. You know, you could go there and listen to him, but I f imagine that with this event, it's going to be more people who are like, okay, now we actually have to figure out what we need to do. Like. What, how we need a canvas. Do you think they'll be weird, any of the people? Like weird I mean... lefties? Because <laughs> <laughs> really? like some of the birdie people are like outcasts. But like, That's true. like but you? Like, no. <laughs> but I, I feel like like there are a lot of outcasts in the birdie movement, but it's because like outcasts tend to understand things. Like they understand people being left out like economically or like racially. Yeah. Um, and a lot of neoliberals are like those cool people that like post Instagram pictures they're the where ones, it's like... They're the ones that go with like the trend or the mainstream. Yeah, you know? like donut hole So people. they fit in, you know? Do you know like donut hole people? Like donut hole Twitter? Or donut Twitter? Is it donut Twitter or donut hole? I don't know. I've never heard this, this term. Donut twin. And so we got our shirts. We got this one, um, which is pretty sick. Like I wanted to wear it, but she chose it. And mine's kind of the basic one. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, and we'll probably make a post video. We have submitted names of individuals and people up and down the state for possible appointments to key positions in California. One thing that I can tell you is that the campaign is looking to work with grassroots. And one of the things that uh, I have requested is to be able to have a meeting between grassroots leaders community leaders, and Bernie Sanders. All right, so we're all here. We just went to the Bernie event, and we took a big group picture and everything, and um, my phone's dying, and so is Natalie's, but we're gonna try to interview people for a little bit. Oh, hey, brother. Okay, so this is Carlos, and did you organize this yes. event today? Yes. yes. Yeah, and so like what, basically what have you been doing like for the Los Angeles community in general? Well, we have yeah. been working on issues, you know, after Bernie lost on 2016, mm. we still connected to the issues because Bernie is about the issues and I'm about the issues. So we've been talking about housing, homelessness, you know, the, the high cost of education. I'm Latina, I'm a refugee child. My family came here through political asylum. Many of you guys that know me don't know my story, but it's part of the reason of who I am and why I'm doing the work that I'm doing. We care about this country and it's in us to make it happen. So I want to ask like, what is your name and like, I know we saw in there, but just like a more in-depth interview maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, yeah, so like what kind of like got you into, I guess, all this? Yeah, well, <laughs> my question. name is Estefania Rebellon. I'm with the Yes We Can World Foundation and we focus on bilingual education for children in need. Um, our work started at the border, but um, now we're also focusing in um, inner cities in Los Angeles because there's a lot of educational budget cuts. Um, but what really got me into the Bernie campaign um, is the fact that I fit the bill. I'm a millennial. So there are a lot of issues that I care about and Bernie Sanders is the only honest person and the only honest candidate that has been doing this for the last almost 40 years. He's not using this as a political campaign. It's not a talking point for him. If you look back at his track record, you can see that he's been working on this for a long time. So what I appreciate about the internet and what I appreciate about all of us and even you live streaming is that now we have the power to go to the internet and find out who's lying, who's saying the truth, who's being bought, and track all of that. Because back in the day, people unfortunately didn't have access to the internet, so you would just trust. And that has been our problem in America, the trust factor. And right now, the millennials are not buying it. First of all, I just want to ask, you know, how many of you remember 2016? And remember the betrayal of Democratic uh, National Committee? 
Uh, now, Bernie is right to identify the need of millions of people to win a campaign like he's running, right? And he's right to identify the history of struggle as you know mass movements being the primary force that has won change in the past. And all I'm seeing is the centrist establishment, the Joe Bidens, the Kamala Harris's, saying that Bernie is sexist, that Bernie is racist, that Bernie's not here for our community. I want each and every one of you to make it clear that that's just not true. So you're a member of a socialist organization. I wanted to kind of hear a little bit about that because that's that's not something we, we run into a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a member of Socialist Alternative. Um, Socialist Alternative is an organization of workers, students, and immigrants. Socialist Alternative, we do a lot of work in, in Seattle. Shama Sawant is uh, our city councilwoman in Seattle. Um, and she was instrumental in winning uh, $15 minimum wage, the first $15 minimum wage in the country, winning huge gains for uh, tenants protections, um, as well as securing funding for uh, a homeless women's shelter, uh, uh, preventing building a police bunker. I thought that if the Occupy movement had a candidate, it would be Bernie Sanders. And he's a fighter on the issues. It's been talked about by many people. To see people wanting to organize for Bernie Sanders, I'm a proud Chicana, I'm a proud socialist, and I actually believe in revolution, but how do we get there, you know? Is it going to be with somebody in office like Trump, or is it going to be with somebody like Bernie? Do you remember when Bernie came to run for office? Do you remember when he said that? And a lot of people decided to run for office, and many of them are winning now. Mm -hmm. We're going to take over City Hall. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Bernie Grants are going to take over City Hall. just take over the world about that. My name is Aura Vasquez and I am a candidate to represent Los Angeles City Council District 10. But one thing that I'm really excited about, not just about obviously my race, but about Bernie, is that he has a real message that speaks to people like you and me. That you are perfect as you are and that we need the diversity that makes this city amazing and that makes this country amazing, and that United is the only way that we're going to do it. Yeah! Yay! So we're kind of gonna get into the notes that Natalie took during yes. this event. Uh, do you wanna do the first one? Yeah, so the first note I have was from someone who said something about Bernie's campaign has a very like pedagogical aspect to it, um, yeah. because it teaches us like where power lies. Mm. Um, and I love that. Like that was the first thing I, that was what inspired me to be like, oh wait, I need to take notes on this so I don't forget that. But Bernie's just such a good educator in getting like the message across about the current situation we're in and then the situation we should be in mm -hmm. um, because of how he talks. Like he's very concise. It's not even him doing all the educating. It's him like inspiring others to educate. Exactly. Like you should be growing and learning. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like you don't get that pedagogical aspect from any other presidential candidate. candidate. Like yeah. just none, you know? So Or the media. Like yeah. corporate media does not give mm -hmm. you any sort of pedagogy. Like they don't teach you about other people's lives really. They just sensationalize issues. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. the Latinx vote um in Los Angeles could very much likely determine the presidency. Because mm. um, of California. The biggest problem is the fact that so many politicians are running and they're running on platitudes. And so they, they make people tune out. When mm. Beto stands on a stool and talks, everyone- <laughs> everyone Stands on a stool. Everyone Sorry. fucking tunes out. <laughs> With people in the Latinx community, you really tell them how Bernie would help. It would be ridiculous for people of color to support Joe Biden. Biden was against like busing and integrating students into schools. So, well, specifically black students into white schools. He did not want that. Well, that was the times, you know, like that was, that was the times when like people thought that way, you know? But then Bernie. Not all like old white men are the same. I think that's another Dude, huge yeah, yeah, scene yeah, yeah, as yeah. just like oh, old white man, old white man, old white man. Oh, and then all of a sudden Biden's running and they're like, oh, Biden. Someone, <laughs> someone was on MSNBC, I don't even know, I think it was like some comedian, some woman who was a comedian, mm. and she was like, I'm just so sick of these white guys running. Joe Biden doesn't give a fuck about people of color. Why? Because he, he should be out in the community, he should be coming out to LA and talking with people of color, but he doesn't. He just doesn't. My mom always is like, you know, you're like heir, you're like heir to me, like, I can't live without you, you know, like, I love you, I'd do anything for you. 
And I want to be like, well, then why aren't you voting for Bernie? Like, that, he's going to determine the well-being of our heir. <laughs> our heir. <laughs> and yeah, and like my future kids' heir, like your grandkids' heir, like yeah. literally heir, actually, literally, Actual like heir. literally. Actual heir. Um, so Vote I just... for Bernie if you want heir. <laughs> so today was pretty damn awesome. I feel like re-energized. I feel like it's not the sequel, it's like the fucking real fight that's gonna happen. Like that was, we were just yes. warming up last time. Yeah, I really felt that today. It was, mm. it was awesome. Um, Please troll us, actually. Troll her. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> we gotta say something about Joe Biden. What about one compliment for Joe Biden each? <laughs> <laughs> compliment? Yeah. I like how creepy he is. I like how he voted for the Iraq war. <laughs> Wait, stop, I'm not, not be laughing at that. I liked his fake apology video. Non-apology po apology video. Yeah, the one where he said, I'm, I'm sorry for the situation, but I'm not sorry for what I did. <laughs> and his arm was kind of like that too. Yeah, like Look, I know social norms are changing. I know they're changing. I know What's women are respected more. Like Beto too, he's like, we're gonna be united Ow. and we're gonna be united. 